All right, welcome to AP Stats, Learning from Studies. This is a very, very quick video, hopefully, that covers what actually we can learn from a study and how we can learn from a study. The important thing I want to introduce you here to is called inference. Statistical inference is drawing conclusions that go beyond the data we produce. So trying to learn something and apply what we learn from our data to beyond just our data. Now, there's two types of inference that we need to be concerned with in this class. And here is an example of the first type, and I'll talk about it. So the US Census Bureau carries out a monthly current population survey of about 60,000 households to estimate the percent of unemployed individuals in the population. This is known as population inference. What they're doing is they're collecting a sample of 60,000 random households, and as long as that sample was random, whatever they learned from that sample could be applied to the population. So if they find out that 5% of that 60% is currently unemployed, then they could take that 5% and say roughly 5% of the entire U.S. population is currently unemployed. So this is population inference, the process of drawing conclusions about a population on the basis of sample data. We infer information about the population from what we know about the sample. Once again, population inference is very easy and allowable as long as the sample was drawn randomly from your population. As long as those 60,000 people were chosen randomly, we can apply anything we learn from that sample to the population of all United States adults. The second type of inference is cause and effect inference. And this is, here's an example, scientists performed an experiment that randomly assigned 21 volunteer subjects to one of two treatments. They were sleep deprived for one night or they had unrestricted sleep. They could sleep as much or as little as they wanted. The experimenters hoped to show that sleep deprivation caused a, de a decrease in performance two days later. So why is this inference cause and effect? Well, what happens here is that because we randomly assigned half the people to do this and the other half to do that, so half were told to, you're not allowed to sleep for one night, the other half were allowed to sleep. Because I randomly assigned that, I can show, as long as I have the four major pillars of experiment, I can show the cause and effect relationship. I can conclude that um, being sleep deprived will cause you to have a decrease in performance. Okay, so as long as you have random assignment in an experiment, you can show a cause and effect relationship within that experiment. So let's do a quick recap. If a sample is chosen randomly from a population, we can infer the results that we learned to that population. That is population inference. If individuals are randomly assigned to two groups, or I'm sorry, two groups in an experiment, we can show inference about cause and effect. So as long as there was random assignment in terms of it was completely random who got what, you can show cause and effect. Here's a little chart to actually help you understand this as well. I'm just trying to make this as easy as possible. So on top we say, we answer the question, were the individuals randomly assigned? Yes or no? Were individuals randomly selected? Yes or no? So we have these individuals. Did we randomly select them from our population? And then once we did, did we randomly assign them to their treatment groups? If the answer is yes to both, well then you can make an inference about the population and you could show cause and effect. If you did not randomly assign them, but you did randomly select those people, then you could learn and apply to the population, but you cannot show cause and effect because there was no random assignment. If both were no, if you didn't select your sample randomly and you did not give them random assignment, then obviously you cannot show inference to the population and you cannot show cause and effect. However, if we um, use volunteers, we did not select them randomly, but we did show or we did um, us randomly assign them to groups. We can show cause and effect, but we can't um, show inference. Now this last, this one right here is what I think is probably the most popular when you're in an experiment. Whoa, sorry about that. <laughs> kind of circled that very poorly there. Because when you're in an experiment, um, you have to understand that you typically have to use volunteers. They were not randomly selected, but who got what treatment was random. So you can show cause and effect, you just can't necessarily apply every what you learned to all the entire population. So many students, uh, so well, before I read this example, let me explain. I'm going to give an example here and I want to talk about four different design scenarios and how each one of them is a little bit different. Okay, and I think this is actually what, what you guys really need to see in terms of what makes the best results. So many students insist that they study better when they listen to music. You may feel the same. However, a teacher doubts this claim and suspects that listening to music actually hurts the GPA. So I'm going to go through four quick scenarios here 
and we're going to talk about the good and the bad of each one. All right, the first scenario, the teacher gets all the students in his AP Stats class to participate in the study. He asks them whether or not they study with music on and divides them into two groups based on how they answer this question. He then proceeds to look at their GPAs. Now, the problem with this is that the students were not selected randomly. Okay, he just used his students in his classroom. That sounds convenient, not selected randomly. Which means that anything he does learn cannot be applied to the population. So I have no population inference here because, um, again, they weren't selected randomly at all. Furthermore, there was no experiment here. Nothing, nobody was made to do anything. All he did was observe, do you listen to music while you study or do you not? So there was absolutely no random assignment, so we cannot show cause and effect. So this is one of our no-nos. Cannot show cause and effect and cannot show any inference because they were not selected randomly and they were not made to do anything. Second scenario. The teacher selects a random sample of students from the school to participate in the study, then asks them if they listen to music while they study or break them into two groups, and then breaks them into two groups based on this answer. So what's the good thing here? Yes, they uh, were selected randomly. Were selected randomly. So that means that anything I do learn can be applied to the population. So yes, I can infer to population. However, this was not an experiment. No experiment. All this was was an observational study where they did get people random chosen, uh, chosen randomly, but all he did was ask them, do you listen to music or not? And then he observed them and looked at their GPAs. That is not experiment, so there was no random assignment at all, so that means this is no cause and effect relationship. Now remember, in an observational study, we can learn about relationships and we can learn about associations. And anything we learn about that, we can apply to the population. So maybe I learn in my study that kids that listen to music actually have lower grades. Well, I might show, I can't say that listening to music causes lower grades, but I can certainly say that there's a connection between the two things and I can apply that connection to my entire school since the kids were taken from the entire school randomly. But I cannot say that listening to music causes lower grades. Third scenario, the teacher gets all the students in his AP stats class to participate in the study. Randomly signs half of them to listen to music while they study for an entire semester and have the remaining half abstain from listening to music for the entire semester. Sorry about the typo there. It should be two listening to music. No P there. So what's the good thing here? Well, they did have random assignments. So this was an experiment. Was an experiment. Okay. This teacher did have random assignment. So who got what was random? Some students were made to study with music. Some students were made to not study with music. So that means that I can show cause and effect. So as long as I have all my pillars, I can show. So yes, I can show cause and effect. Okay. However, they were not drawn randomly. So there was no random sample. So I just used students in my classroom. That was very convenient for me. The students were had to be willing to do it. They were not chosen randomly. They were students in my AP classroom. It could be a little bit of bias there because the kids in AP are supposed to be a little bit smarter. But regardless of that, the idea is there was random assignments. So I can say cause and effect, but I could only say that listening to music causes lower test scores if you were one of my students in my AP class. So whatever I do learn about cause and effect can only be applied to the exact students that were in my study. So since they were not drawn randomly from the population, I cannot say that this is going to be true cause and effect for everybody. I can show cause and effect because of the random assignment, but I can only apply my results to the people that were in my study. I can't apply them to everybody. The last scenario is our yes, yes, our best scenario. So we select a random sample of students from the entire school, then randomly assign half of them to listen to music while they study for the entire semester, have the other half abstain from listening to music while studying for the entire semester. So this was a random sample. Yes, random sample.
So the kids that were involved in this did not volunteer. They were randomly picked, and they all participated, okay? Which, again, you see how that's tough to do, but you need that to happen if you want to be able to, you know, have the best outcome here. And yes, there was random assignments. So yes, this was an experiment with random assignment. And that's important. So this means that I can show um, cause and effect, okay, because there was random assignment. So yes, I can show cause and effect. And not only can I say that listening to music causes low test grades, but I could say that that is true for all students because yes, because I had random sample, yes, I can infer to entire population. Okay, so this is my yes-yes scenario. This is where because my, um, my subjects were chosen randomly, that means anything I learn about them, I could apply to the population. And yes, there was random assignment, which means that I could show that there is a cause and effect relationship. Just a quick recap, back in uh, sample three, or uh, analysis three, I had a random assignment, so I can't show cause and effect, but I can only apply those results to the people in my study. I can't apply them to the entire population because there's no random um, sample from the population. In number two here, there was a random sample drawn from the population, so I can apply anything I learned to the population, but I cannot show cause and effect. I can apply an association to the entire population, but not cause and effect because there was no random assignment. It was just an observational study. And this one was my no-no. They were not randomly selected, and there was, this is not an experiment with any random assignment, so I can't show cause and effect. And even if I, you know, I can't show cause and effect, and I can't apply it to my populations. This is kind of the worst thing. The only thing I can learn in number one is I can learn something about the kids that I looked at. That's it. I can't even learn a cause and effect. All I can learn is that there's a connection, but it's only dealing with the kids in my study. So hopefully you understand the two ideas of inference. Inference about what can I learn from my sample and how do I apply to my population. And inference about if I have random assignment, I'm allowed to show that there's a cause and effect relationship. So hopefully there's a quick, easy video that, that allows you to understand the importance of inference as we move forward.